Well, Colin, are you a fan of spoof movies? Who isn't a fan of spoof movies? So you love like, like date movie. Who are those guys, by the way? Uh, Friedberg and Seltzer. Shameless assholes. But see, they're funny because it's like, did you see a trailer for a movie? Then you're gonna get that reference when you see their movie. Well, the good thing is that those types of movies, they're never dated. Yeah! What? Okay! You know the sad thing is, those guys are millionaires. You know who isn't a millionaire? The Zuckers. No. I saw David Zucker at a deli in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. What was he? He, he was asked he? if I would pay for his meal. <laughs> I thought he was working behind the counter. He was, he was washing <laughs> dishes. <laughs> well, Colin, we're here to talk about something we don't talk about a lot in our videos, which is just straight comedies. Yeah. We're talking about a comedy film called Top Secret from, from 1984. 1984. Um, Directed by David Zucker. It's David Zucker and Jim Abrahams. Yes, and, Jim, uh, and Jerry Zucker. Jerry, yeah. The three they all kind of direct. I don't know right. who's credited, but they're all direct. It might be a Director's Guild thing where like only two can be credited or something like that. But uh, yeah, so the Zuckers and uh, Jim Abrahams, like most people would know them from directing uh, uh, Airplane and Naked Gun and maybe like some police squad. But in between those two movies in 1984. They made their masterpiece, their I, comedic I, masterpiece. I certainly think so and. Uh, Unsung masterpiece, because this is the one that nobody talks everybody about. Everybody forgets about this one. Yeah. And uh, as much as I love Airplane and I love Naked Gun, um, those were huge successes, but my favorite is Top Secret. I think by far, I don't know what it is. I think it was just like when it came out and I was just at the right age. And I kind of just latched onto it and I've seen it a million times and I, I absolutely love it. Well, they their, their style of comedy has kind of fallen out of, like, because I think we, we need to make a, a point that this is a spoof movie, mm -hmm. but it is absolutely not the same thing as the date movies, what epic movies. What they've evolved into. This yes. was back when spoof movies weren't really a thing. I mean, I, I, there was something uh, before Airplane. I think Airplane like brought it to the mainstream. But enough about me. I hope this hasn't been boring for you. It's just that whenever I start to talk about Lane, I always get so carried away. I lose all track of time. Well, their their particular style, mm -hmm. and this is this is the big thing that differentiates them from all the, because there was a window of time where there was actually like imitators of this style. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, I think probably like the early '90s or something. Yeah, you uh, had like Loaded Weapon, Loaded Weapon, and, uh, Weapon One, and a bunch of other movies with Leslie Nielsen in them that the Zuckers had nothing to do oh, with. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, and then it evolved into like yeah, scary movie started a new wave of it, and that's what yeah. led to epic movie and all that stuff. Um, but the difference being that the Zucker movies are actually funny. Well, one, they're actually <laughs> funny. There's actually constructed jokes. Yeah. But the thing is, like, you don't have to have seen what they're kind of spoofing to find them funny. It's not just loaded with references. Yeah. And it's uh, references to pop culture. And I find, like, the worst thing about those, like, scary movie and especially the date movie and yeah. those things, I don't even consider them movie. We are the pirates what? of the Caribbean. Yes, the pirates what? of the Caribbean. Huh. No, they're not. They're fucking awful. <laughs> they, should, they should be ashamed of themselves. Well, they, they literally, like I mentioned trailers, that's what yeah. they did. Like, because they were making those movies while, before the movies they were spoofing even came out. Yeah. So they were basing their jokes on, or their references on things from the trailers to mm -hmm. those movies. I don't think they gave a shit that the fact that like their movies were dated by the time they came out as yeah. long as they were just getting money from the audience. Yeah, it was a take the money and run situation. Iron Man walks in, he farts. <laughs> the Hulk comes in, he farts. I think the it's joke like, in one of them is we see Iron Man and it's like a cheap Halloween costume yeah. and then a cow lands on him and crushes him. Like I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> but the but with the, and especially like cuz they're directly referencing things with that. And what yeah. the Zuckers did so well is that they were more of uh, kind of like what Weird Al calls style parodies, yeah, okay. where, he, where he would do songs that are kind of in the style of another artist, right. but they weren't a direct parody. Mm -hmm. He did direct parodies too, but like he did Dare to Be Stupid, which was sort of a Devo sounding song. Okay, yeah. 
And the Zuckers, a lot of times, like occasionally they would do something that's spoofing something specific, but mm -hmm. more often it was just a... It's like a general a, a genre. sort of genre, yeah. Yeah, like Airplane. I mean, actually, in the case of Airplane, I mean, it was almost like a scene-for-scene scene like remake airport. of some B-movie that no one's ever seen. Yeah. Mr. Stryker is the only person aboard who can fly this plane. The pilot in the war, and we can all help him by not getting in a panic. There's no reason to panic. Now, it is true that one of the crew members is ill, but the other two pilots are just fine at the controls flying the plane. At that time, the sort of disaster movies were really big. Um, that's but nobody had seen the Zero Hour movie. Yeah. It was just something that where they just took it and they just added jokes on top of it. But the oh, joke, it's, it's not relying on like, oh, you have to have seen that movie to get the jokes. Right. It's, and, and it's just a framework. That's what makes them more timeless. Like yeah. I find that, yeah, especially, yeah, those newer movies, those things are dated before they even come out. These ones, they're still hilarious because they're not... I don't know, the jokes aren't dated and they're not referring to anything that, you know, with minor exceptions here there's and there. There's a couple things here and there, like in Top Secret, there's mm -hmm. a, a sequence that's sort of uh, The Great Escape, um, where he's on a motorcycle. There's that, but I think that's sort of more uh, sort of classic Hollywood stuff. But there's like a reference to like the Montgomery Moore mailing list. What the hell did you say to him? Nothing, I just told him I put his name on the Montgomery Ward mailing list. I, I don't that even was, know what that I means. I had no idea what it was. But. <laughs> That's the one, that and the Pinto joke. The Pinto, well, we'll get to that, but I <laughs> think that's hilarious. That's just an age thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah. uh, but the point being that, that they, yeah, they take these genres that people are familiar with mm -hmm. and uh, use that as a framework to put the jokes on top of. Yeah, and there's actually a story, there's actually characters. Uh, that, and... that's, yeah, that's what I wanted to mention too, is that they, there's a lot of attention to detail as far as like a well-constructed screenplay goes. Mm -hmm. You don't really care about the plot in any of these movies, but the plot is there, and it is mm -hmm. there as a framework to put the jokes on. Yeah, um, a lot of, and they're really, really like rigidly structured mm -hmm. as far as like like telling a story. Mm -hmm. Although so far there is no known treatment for death's crippling effects, still everyone can acquaint himself with the three early warning signs of death: one, rigor mortis; two, a rotting smell; three. Occasional drowsiness. Um, so back, uh, I guess when Kentucky Fried Movie came out, that was a movie that uh, John Landis directed, but uh, the Zuckers and Jim Abrahams wrote for it. Uh, they didn't direct it. Ba based on their theater show. They did a uh, live, oh, okay. live stage version of a lot of the sketches that are in Kentucky Fried Movie started as their live oh, okay. theater shows. And then they sort of formed, a, it's called the Zazz Film. So Zucker, Abraham, Zucker. Yeah. Um, and then Airplane was the first movie that they directed, and then uh, they did Police Squad, which I think only lasted for six episodes. Did they all even air? I feel like it got canceled I, before I, those episodes even aired. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> A lot of people, when Naked Gun came out, didn't, it said from the files of Police Squad, but not, I don't think anybody really knew. Yeah, which is almost a joke in itself that they did that, because yeah. they knew that they, they had like Based this Based on this TV, TV show, show that nobody saw. Yeah, but um, it is, it's important to note, the Zuckers uh, and Abrams uh, are from Milwaukee. Oh my God. From, from right here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I think that's important to note because I don't know if I can properly explain what this means, but their humor feels very Midwest to me. Really? <laughs> Show me your nuts. <laughs> think of like kind of East Coast comedy, like New York. You think of more kind of intellectual, yeah, self-loathing. Okay, I know what you mean. And then you think of like, LA, that coast, it's very more kind of like smug and detached. And like kind of cool. Yeah, like too cool for school. But Midwest humor, the Zucker Brothers humor yeah. is very just sort of like anything for a laugh. It's very, I wouldn't say it's like lowbrow, but it's very kind of cornball and oh, yeah. I don't know, just funny. I, like I would say just, they're just great gags. I would say lowbrow often, like they have jokes about like boobs and boners. Mix fine spirit in my hair. But it never yeah, feels okay. uh, crude. Exactly. It always yeah, feels okay. so innocent, like right. a little little kid on the schoolyard making dumb jokes. Yeah. Um, and that's definitely that that's their humor. Uh, yeah, it's uh, very silly. And kind of rewatching this movie, it's like, man, it's it's very silly, but it's just very very fun, and it is just very cornball jokes that, uh, I don't know, they just crack me up. I well, think it's hilarious. Roger Ebert once, I don't know if it was Naked Gun, maybe Naked Gun or Naked Gun 2, Roger Ebert described their style of comedy as you laugh at every joke twice. You mm -hmm. laugh at it once at the joke and then again at yourself for laughing at something so stupid. Exactly, yeah. Those mics! Yeah! 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 
<laughs> but it's like it's almost the guilty pleasure, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like, oh man, I can't believe well, I it's, lost it's it. Well, it's so that. dumb, but it's it's like it's what I always call smart dumb. Yeah. Where it's like clever. you can tell there was a lot of thought put into that joke. Yeah. As opposed to the date movies where it's they're, like they're not even jokes. They're not even jokes. Those are they're, those they're, are just references and yeah. that's it. And that's why Top Secret mm -hmm. is their 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 secret masterpiece because yeah, I this love movie it. is mm -hmm. so dense with jokes. <laughs> but it's such a weird okay, so like I guess the premise, uh, it's almost like it's like a mashup of two genres. That, that's interesting uh, too, is yeah, just the premise is weird. And just the weirdest genres, and even like listening to the commentary track with them, the Zuckers, even they can't believe, you know, why they created this movie. So yeah. it's like a mashup. They liked Elvis movies, uh, Elvis musicals, and then they liked World War II, the kind of French resistance yeah, type movies. Sort of spy movies. or like prison break type movies. Yeah, and they'd sort of mash them together, and it's like this weird kind of like anachronistic, you know, it's like World War II, but then, uh, you know, you've got the Elvis angle, so it's like rock and roll was around <laughs> at that time. I guess it's, it's post-World War II because there's East and West Germany. So basically, East Germany uh, has this plan that all the NATO submarines are gathering in the Gibraltar Strait. And they uh, have captured this scientist, and they're developing this Polaris mine, which will, it's like a magnetic mine. <laughs> will attach itself and blow up all these submarines. Um, and they're hoping that that act will reunite Germany under, under the, the one, one rule, basically. Yeah. And as a distraction, they want, uh, they, they're starting this sort of like arts and culture festival. And they're having all these sort of, you know, singers and performers come around from all the world. Uh, and they're hoping that, you know, the world's eye will be on that. And, We'll kind of ignore what's going on over here. And enter uh, Nick Rivers. Oh, baby, please, baby, baby please, baby, please, spend this night with me. So Nick Rivers is an American rock and roll star, and he gets entangled in this mess. He ends up getting imprisoned. He meets the scientist that's been also been imprisoned, uh -huh. uh, where we have our, our Batman Forever yeah, it's Michael, it's, it's Michael Go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, together again for the very first time. Yeah, and Val Kilmer's first role. First, this is right. This is his, this first, is his first acting movie. role. I think the Zuckers saw him in some stage play or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, something Sean like Penn. that. But, uh, and then uh, he escapes from prison, finds... Uh, Falls this... into the, the French resistance. They, yeah, Who are yeah. trying to uh, seek out Michael Go and rescue him and bring yeah. him back to, to France. Right, so the rest of the movie is him with these resistance people trying to break Michael Go out of prison. Right. And that's the movie in a nutshell. Yeah. They get this great intro where it's like, well, first of all, it opens with Omar Sharif, who I can't believe <laughs> is in this movie. This is kind of amazing. Who's in, is he Dr. Zhivago? Dr. Zhivago yeah. and uh, Lawrence of Arabia. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so you've got this like heavy hitter actor who's known for all these amazing, like, you know, Oscar winning movies. Well, that, that's another important thing to point out is the, the, the casting of these movies, which is yeah. they cast real actors. Mm -hmm. They cast dramatic actors, which of course, uh, the most famous of those would be Leslie Nielsen. They put oh, him yeah. in, in Airplane and The Naked Gun, but before that he was a dramatic actor. Mm -hmm because their stuff is so deadpan. <laughs> and that's why the jokes, that, as stupid as they are, yeah. they almost feel more dignified by the fact that they're, you know, lines coming from the mouths the of these real delivery people. Delivery has to be perfect. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? They and never play it up too much as no. goofy. There's no because, winking at yeah, the, at the camera. And you can see that in other movies that cast Leslie Nielsen based on like the success of Naked Gun. That was like a sort of magical discovery that, you know, he could sort of do that type of acting, like the comedy acting, and that really, like, that yeah. was the whole renaissance of his career. As soon as Nordberg is better, he's welcome back at Police Squad. <laughs> Unless he's a drooling vegetable. But I think that's only common sense. <laughs> but, but you look at some of those movies that weren't made by the Zuckers that mm. cast him, where they have him making goofy faces, and they, they're playing it up too much. And they don't like, know how to use them. Exactly, yeah. They don't know, just, just play it straight. Yeah. 
act like there isn't a joke, and that becomes the joke. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> yeah, here we go to, to Val Kilmer. I mean, this is his first movie, and uh, he's perfect. He's in great role. in this movie. He's fantastic. And he's, he's really singing, and he's dancing, and it's actually him singing. Yeah, he's doing everything. So this is like a musical, we have to, we have to say. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, like a bunch so of musical numbers. It always sort of goes back to the old Elvis numbers, where at any time, you know, you could sort of just break, break out, out into song. Yeah. Um, Which the movie starts with uh, yeah, a song so, called Skeet Surfing. Skeet Surfing. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally a, the, I guess, the Beach Boy song, but they seem to take popular songs and just sort of change yeah, the lyrics. It's, it's almost Surfing USA. Yeah, pretty much. But it's funny during that that <laughs> opening sequence where I mean we see all these young surfers on on surfboards like shooting skeets, <laughs> shooting skeets. But uh, uh, they show like the the Billboard top charts and uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> something I never noticed until this recent rewatch is like the top three songs in the country are, are Nick all, Rivers. They're all, not only are they all Nick Rivers, they're all songs about skeet shooting. You're skeeting hard, <laughs> you're cheating hard. And then there was one that was like skeet, skeet, skeet. I, I don't know, like, I never noticed I, that they I were all remember. songs about skeet shooting. It's so funny. <laughs>
and uh, he's, he's getting tortured. Do you know which room the final chemistry exam is in? All the exams are over. Haven't you been to class? And no. I have to say, this is like this is my favorite gag because I think everybody has this sort of like nightmare post high school, you know, when you're back in school and you've forgotten to study for an exam. Thank God. And we don't want this to turn too much into this joke's we don't funny, want to spoil, this joke's funny. We don't want to spoil everything. There's um, lots of surprises. But, but. but my favorite gag, okay. maybe ever, okay. uh, is... Oh, I'm sorry. I really don't know any German. That's all right. I know a little German. He's sitting over there. And we cut to a little guy in Lederhosen. <laughs> and it's not just that, like, I mean, that's funny, but he is so happy that she pointed him out. Yeah, he just He's just, like he waving just his little wave. <laughs> it's so funny. And another type of gag that I think is one of my favorites, uh, there's like a couple in this movie, but you see them in like Naked Gun is like uh, the background gag. And there's one where she's sort of like talking to the maitre d' and he can't find her name on the, on the guest list. And in the background, Val Kilmer's, you know, having a suit made because they said... Oh yeah, they're like, because that, that <laughs> happens at a nice restaurant where if, oh, you have to wear a suit. Wear a suit. You we think they're just going to give him a jacket. Just give him a jacket, but no, they're like measuring. And like every time it cuts back, you know, he's in his boxers and then he's like getting measured. <laughs> and like the guy's like sewing, like, oh, it's amazing. Well, that, that yeah, that falls into one of the Zucker's rules. They, they apparently have like a whole list of rules mm -hmm. for their comedy. And one of them is if you have a gag going on in the background, mm -hmm. you can't have another one in the foreground because right. they cancel each Everything other. Everything is very serious. So that's why, like, in more so in the Naked Gun movies, where if there's any like sort of exposition happening yeah. to get the plot to keep moving, you always have to have something in the something background. Something funny is happening yeah. in the background while the exposition is going yeah, on. Yeah, so it's always like really dull, kind of like boring dialogue. But, yeah, uh, it's yeah. just it's so layered and so. I love dense. it. Yeah, there's so many things, and <laughs> it's just like you know, if one joke doesn't land, then it's already on to the next joke, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, so we were talking earlier about the set pieces in this movie, comic yes. set pieces. There are two, I think, that are fantastic. They're, they're, and I don't say this like jokingly, <laughs> even though it's a stupid movie, they're works of art. They're amazing. They're so they're amazingly really choreographed. As far as like technical execution, they're incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one being, I guess at some point, Nick uh, is being dragged along by Hillary. She's trying to find the French resistance. And she says, oh, I heard about this uh, uh, Swedish, Swedish book shop owner. Yeah. Uh, he can lead them to the resistance. And uh, so they go, they run into the Swedish bookshop. Hello, Peter Cushing. Peter Cushing, <laughs> Grand Moff Tarkin from Star Wars. Speaking of uh, real actors embarrassing themselves in this goofy Slumming comedy. It. Yeah, so this whole scene, instead of speaking Swedish, the entire scene is filmed in reverse. Oh, how are you? On the floor, but what do you have him? My father is Dr. Paul Flamond. May I help you? They, they film the whole thing with them talking normally, but doing their motions backwards. Mm -hmm. Then you reverse the film. So what they're saying... Is in reverse. It's, but it, it's in reverse, but then it's subtitled as, as it's subtitled as if it's Swedish. Right. And it kind of sounds... Yeah, it's like, like, like pre-Twin Peaks. She's well doing it's, it's one shot. Well, it starts, I mean, the first one is he's got this giant monocle. <laughs> and he's looking at so the So you book. see the, the exaggerated eye, he pulls it down, he just has a giant eyeball. <laughs> and an amazing bit of trivia. Yes. Okay, so this movie was shot in England. Uh, I don't know if it was Shepperton or Pinewoods, but um, the special effects makeup guy, uh, Stuart Freeborn, he worked on the Star Wars films. He did Yoda, he did Jabba the Hutt, and he was the one who did the sort of exaggerated eye in Peter Cushing. So he had to take a head cast of Peter Cushing. And then uh, years later, that was the head cast that they laser scanned in for Rogue One when they did the Peter Cushing. That is so CG amazing. And I have a theory that they actually fucked up and scanned in the wrong cast. They scanned in the one with the gigantic, the gigantic eye, eyeball. Which is why he looked so fucked up in Rogue One. <laughs> <laughs> like... But that's so weird. Like, like, like this goofy comedy from 1984 yeah. that no one even really talks about anymore. And that's what was used as reference for. I guess that was uh, the a modern blockbuster. This was, I think, the second last movie that he ever did, or oh, maybe really? the last movie before he died. Wow! Did one other thing. So this was the last uh, headcast that they they had lying around. I guess it was probably I don't know. It wouldn't be in the Lucasfilm archives, but they had it lying around somewhere. It's so. in the, the Zaz archives. The Zaz archives, which which is it's David Zucker's old, mom's basement. This is a dusty closet. <laughs> 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 Oh, 
And then from there, they, you know, they meet up with the French resistance and they, they sort of break Michael Go out of this prison, which have that whole scene, the prison break scene is so fantastic. It has a lot of great gags. I think one we mentioned earlier was the Pinto gag. Talking about like dated jokes. That, that's that's the big one. I think it's hilarious. It's it's funny if you get it. If you get but... it. And that was because the Ford Pinto had an infamously bad design. I think the gas tank was in the back, and you can Google it. There's videos on YouTube. Uh, so anytime a Ford Pinto was rear-ended, it would just fucking explode <laughs> into flames. But th but that's one where like a, a modern audience they would not, not get they're that. They're not gonna get that. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's still kind of funny. It kind of works as a gag, even if you don't know the Ford Pinto. But it's like, ding. I suppose, yeah. yeah whatever. Just the, that it's, minimal impact causes it, such a huge explosion. Yeah, at that yeah. time, it was like a kind of big scandal. Oh man, yeah, that prison break. There's so many gags in there, and I don't want to just like point out gags. You can. This whole scene is just amazing. It's but, one after another. But that is the scene that features the the cow. The cow, which is sort of on the poster. The cow is like the main selling point for the movie. It's like the the little dog from Something About Mary, where that yeah. shit was plastered mm -hmm. every. Everywhere. It's just in one little scene. It's yeah, it's not the most hilarious gag no, of the movie. It has like, it's... you know, whatever. Uh, and then from there they kind of escape the prison with uh, with Michael Go and then they have like a car chase and then uh, the leader of the resistance turns out to be a, you know, he's an, uh, a spy. Mm. He's been selling out the resistance, so him and Val Kilmer are fighting on this, this truck. <laughs> And this is probably like the best scene. In well, th this is where, I mean, you could have them underwater fist fighting oh, and man. that's a gag. Yeah. But then it just keeps building on top of that to the point where it is an entire like Old West bar fight. Bar fight underwater. underwater. <laughs> keeps showing more and more of this environment than it's like a table of card players yeah. and then you know falling chandelier and the whole bar and there there is still that weird like dogville-esque like they're in an empty void where it's like he throws he punches him through a window but it's just a floating window yeah. there's no wall, <laughs> there's no wall. <laughs> it's not a complete environment yeah. but it's just it's just whatever they need to right to... <laughs> but that's another gag where it's like in in concept it's so weird and mm -hmm. stupid but the fact that it's almost like the concept is funny but then on top of that it's also funny watching it thinking that like people had to execute this oh man it probably <laughs> took a long time yeah it's really elaborate and it's really yeah. like like i said earlier like it borders on like surrealism yeah <laughs> but something you don't usually see that sort of level uh of I don't know, technical prowess and like comedies. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. Right. Know. Well that that and the the backwards scene, both of those. Oh, like yeah. you don't see anything like that in any of the other Zucker movies. No. As much as I like the other ones, but the, this one just has like a a level of ambition that I don't think they they strive for after this. Yeah, and they're really really impressive. So from there we sort of get onto the end and they you know get on the plane and uh, escape and that's pretty much the end of the movie. It, it's they're sort of like story's over. Bye. Yeah. I'll always remember you. And I'll miss you most of all, Scarecrow. Well, it's weird to think they did this movie, and I think it was kind of a flop. I don't think it did very well. I don't think so either. Because I don't think people knew what to make of it. No, and it was kind of the only one of their movies that didn't get a sequel. I mean, Airplane had Airplane 2, and then Naked Gun, uh, they had three of those. Yeah. I never saw the third one, but... Well, that's that's what's weird, is the idea that there was a point in time where this type of comedy was... Mm -hmm that popular mm -hmm. where you could get a sequel to something like Naked Gun because you don't see that you don't see comedies anymore no unless it's like a, um, an already existing property like a Ghostbusters or something mm -hmm. but even Ghostbusters is like there's a science fiction element to it right yeah. but just like a straight comedy those just do not exist anymore as far as like mainstream movies go it's weird especially spoof movies I mean I think they just have like a bad rap because people associate them with the uh, date movie crap. Yeah, those guys. I mean those movies would always like they do really well opening weekend and then they would just nosedive. Yeah, and I think uh, they're just cash grabs pretty much. Oh yeah, yeah, and, they're not even uh, movies. I don't even know when the last scary movie came out. David Zucker did uncredited directing on the last one because he directed oh, okay. uh, three and four, and then five. 
those movies are notorious for having like lots of reshoots and lots of re-edits. Oh, I see. Okay. I, uh, and I have not seen the movie in forever, but Scary Movie 2, when mm -hmm. it came out on DVD, there was a whole bunch of deleted scenes mm -hmm. and I watched it. Every single deleted scene was something that was plot related. Oh, yeah. They pulled out everything related to the plot, and all you had was a series of uh, gags. disconnected gags. Yeah. Um, and David Zucker didn't have anything to do with that one, but they brought him that around was for the, the Wayans, third one. Yeah. That was the Waynes, yeah. But just that idea where it's like, like we were talking with the Zucker brothers, where there's so much attention to following this rigid well, structure of a plot. It is actually a story, yeah. Yeah, and it's not like you, you don't care about the story, really. Mm -hmm. It's about the gags, but the story is there. Yeah, you feel it's like a movie. You feel like you're watching a movie. Yeah. Um, as opposed to... Yeah, Just a mishmash of gags that don't... Right, and, and gags that don't... Like, there's a part in the second movie where... It's just like a breakdown of scary movie mm -hmm. um, where they're like playing basketball and it's a parody of like some commercial that was popular at that time. And there's no jokes in the scene. It's just a recreation of that commercial. Hey, remember this? And, and so like a like, moderate, like if you're watching that now, no one knows what the fuck that's supposed to yeah, be. Yeah, that's just so bizarre. Yeah. So I think the whole like uh, kind of subgenre, I guess, like uh, spoof movies just devolved into yeah. sort of crap. So I don't, I don't know. Well, even, and even like the Zuckers, like uh, they kind of, like Jerry Zucker went off and he made ghosts. He wanted to be taken more seriously. Oh God. Yeah. Wait, the Patrick Swayze movie? Yep. He directed it? Yep. Oh my God. That's Jerry Zucker. Holy shit. Mm. Uh, David Zucker kind of kept doing the comedy thing. And he went on to do Basketball. Hey, I'll come by. I like hospitals. No, you don't. You like Taco Bell. Oh, wow. Which takes place in Milwaukee. Okay. There's, there's one shot of actual Milwaukee in Basketball. I guess that's kind of like a spoof. It's it kind of. It feels more like a generic comedy plot. Right. I mean, I guess you could say it's like a spoof of like sports movies. But that's sort of where like... I feel like their style of comedy was sort of falling by the wayside. Mm -hmm. And I guess you could say it's a passing of the torch movie because then the, the South Park guys are in it, of course. Right. But What about Plump Fiction? Did you ever see that? Oh, the Julie Brown movie? Yeah. No, I never saw that. Even though I like Julie Brown, she's funny, it's, but... It's terrible. Yeah. But it's just so weird to me that there was, like, copycats. Yeah. Like, now you have, like, everyone, like people trying to, to replicate the success of, like, I don't know, the Fast and the Furious movies. Oh, Jesus. Like, all these big action movies. Yeah, but, big, dumb action movies. But in the 90s, you had people trying to imitate, you had, like, Spy Hard with Leslie <sighs> oh, Nielsen. Oh, Jesus, yeah. You had, like, people trying to replicate the success of the Zuckers, like, and that feels so it's far removed from anything related to, like, what's popular now. It's, yeah, it's, it's weird. Yeah, it's very strange. It's like they're the only ones that could kind of get it right because yeah. they were the sort of originators of it and um, very few movies have been able to sort of recapture that I think. Yeah. So. The Hot Shot movies, they do okay. Yeah, you know, there's, there's some Jim good Abrams. gags in those. Yeah. yeah, I remember those being kind of funny, mm -hmm. especially like, you know, part two. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if, if like a, a modern audience that isn't familiar with this style of comedy, if they mm -hmm. would think this type of humor is dated, I have no idea. All I know is that I watched, in preparation for this discussion, <laughs> I rewatched Top Secret. I had not seen it in a long time. And I think I've talked about this before, how like, just in my everyday life, like I laugh a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I laugh at all sorts of stupid crap. But when I'm watching a movie, like a comedy film, mm -hmm. where it's, its intention is to make me laugh, I don't laugh a lot. Okay. Like I saw Deadpool and I was like, I, I understand why this is funny. Yeah. But I didn't laugh you a lot. You just sort of like internalizing and thinking, yeah, that's Yeah, clever. like I get it. Like yeah. that is funny. But I'm kind of like Bill Haverchuk from uh, Freaks and Geeks <laughs> okay. where he's like, I don't like jokes. I don't think they're funny. Um, but I rewatched Top Secret and I was laughing out loud. <laughs> well, you texted me. I was very I, I sent I was you very a message. Happy, yeah. I was like, I am laughing, I'm laughing so fucking out loud. hard. <laughs> like uh, there's something about their style of humor. They're and just, just surprising that, gags that kind of catch yeah, you off I guard. Think, yeah, I think surprising is a good way to put it. Yeah. Because it, things happen that you're not expecting. And I think that's important with horror films and comedy. Yeah. You should you should uh, not be expecting where it's, it's going. It's, it's the guy falling off and shattering. The guy yeah. falling off the building and shattering. Like, okay, where like, the hell did that come exactly. from? Exactly. Like, and that's why I think the... Uh, the best kind of uh, uh, per contemporary version of what mm -hmm. the Zuckers were doing is like David Wayne and Wet Hot American Summer. Because mm -hmm. Wet Hot American Summer, the movie and the Netflix show, makes yeah, me laugh. Yeah, that's pretty good, yeah. So fucking and it's hard. very like deadpan. And you might say that each and every one of us is a crew member here on Spaceship Earth. <laughs> when, when would we say that? Anytime. Dinner. Literally anytime. And yeah, perfect, I think yeah. that's the key is like, don't treat it like it's a comedy. Mm -hmm. No matter how stupid your gag is, yeah. it'll be a million times funnier. Absolutely. So I, yeah, I mean, I guess that's my, the only way I can recommend this is just saying that it made me laugh out loud. And yeah, on rewatch, 
even though I'd seen it before, mm -hmm. there's still that element of surprise where you're like, I can't believe they're doing this. Yeah, well, I love it. I give it my highest recommendation. It's one of my favorites. The best Zucker Brothers movie, and I'm going to say now after rewatching, maybe mm -hmm. one of the best comedies of all time. I think so. That's a bold statement, but I'm going to stand by it. Hold them to it. <laughs> But check this movie out, uh, everybody, you know, it's like the sort of uh, forgotten masterpiece. Yes, yes. And it deserves a watch. A giant watch. Like in that scene. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs>